All right. Hey, Pitchground. Welcome back to another edition of Path Fix. We're going to be joined by Ralph and Samira. For those of you guys who do not know, Ralph is the CEO of the company and Samira is the COO of Path Fix. And if you don't know what Path Fix is, if you haven't joined us for our previous webinars, uh, why don't we have Samira share with us what Path Fix is and then we'll dive into uh, the features and use cases today. Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, so glad you could join us. Uh, PathFix is an OAuth proxy that enables uh, SaaS integrations in just a few minutes. Awesome. And, and uh, who, sh who should be interested in PathFix? Right, so uh, PathFix can be used by all uh, SaaS developers, uh, SaaS builders, and SaaS founders who are looking to expand the functionality of their platform by adding more integrations to allow their end users to access platform, their platforms and pull data or push data into those platforms. Awesome. And uh, just to give us some context behind PathFix, when did you guys uh, officially launch and how long have you guys been working on this uh, product? Right, so uh, we've actually been SaaS founders for um, a little over six years. And in those six years, we've built about um, you know seven different uh, products just together. Uh, Pathfix is our um, second company together. And um, you know we sort of um, came on this idea late last year, which was, which was around end of November. And we went live with uh, PathFix in Feb, the first week of Feb. And it's just been rolling ever since. Awesome. So I'm excited to actually dive into our features today, as well as various uh, use case scenarios, because that's probably where a lot of light bulbs are going to go off for a lot of our viewers, where they're going to be like, hey, you know what? I actually didn't think of this before. I didn't think about how I can save money. I didn't think about how I can save time. Uh, I have this type of business and I didn't even consider using a solution like PathFix. So uh, let's jump into that right away. Sure, we can't wait to, you know, actually share how SaaS companies can actually save a lot of time by, um, you know, just using PathFix to handle, you know, the non-peripheral OAuth connectivity and the communication side of it. So yeah, we'll, let's, just, let's just jump right in. All right, let's do it. All right, so um, should I just share my screen here? Sure. Okay, so just let me know if you're able to see my see, see the screen. See your screen. Great. All right, so uh, Ralph, do you want to take this one? Just yeah, to go over, and yeah, just to go over the different stages of integration development that every um, SaaS company, any product company, would go through. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so like the slides uh, says over here, uh, the integration strategy is actually your starting point uh, to you know to deciding how you want your software to fit into the end user's stack or how do you want your SaaS to fit into the end user's environment. Uh, the complete starting point over here, as mentioned, uh, is actually the integration strategy. Uh, you know, what analytical tools do you want to integrate into? Uh, do you want to pull uh, from documents, uh, from Excel files? Uh, do you want to push information into uh, notification systems? Uh, you, you'll combine all of that and put that into your integration strategy. Uh, then you'll identify, okay, you know, so I've said that, you know, I want to pull the information from, uh, you know, from Drive or from Excel. Uh, you know, the providers for that would be something like uh, uh, a Google Drive or a OneDrive or Dropbox. Uh, if you talk, you know, if you, if you want to pull from analytical tools or if you want to push data into analytical tools, uh, you would probably have Google Analytics as a, a provider or Marketo as a provider. So that's where that's the second part where you identify the providers, uh, uh, 
uh, the providers that you want to integrate into. Now, obviously, it's very important to uh, to decide what, decide and understand what is your end user's uh, stack. You know, what are the other softwares uh, that your end user is currently using? Uh, you know, your your target end customer is using, and make sure that your integration strategy. Uh, you know, would fit into his his current stack. It wouldn't tell him that, that you know, my SaaS integrates with something that you don't use use or you've never used before. Uh, then you go on to uh, building the functionality. You know, you you obviously have your code base uh, in Python or, or Node.js or uh, or React or a combination of these uh, possibly. Uh, you'll use design tools. You'll basically then go ahead to build. Uh, Build functionality. Now, when you actually get to build functionality, uh, you try to decide, uh, you know, uh, what kind of uh, APIs, uh, you know, th then then you sort of you know starting to build as to what APIs and what parts are going to trigger uh, at what stage. Uh, so, for example, uh, you know, in Pathfix itself, uh, you know, we we set up notifications if there is a failure. Uh, uh, you know your messages don't go through. We we have the capability to send you a notification on Slack that uh, you know a failure has you know the system has encountered a failure by trying to send a message. Now you know those trigger points uh, are are very important over here. Uh, you know because those will be uh, the guidelines for your team to go ahead and build the API. Uh, and then you know once you have all of this uh, ready, then you are tasked with you know the two biggest. Uh, elements which are actually the OAuth uh, connection and going live. Now the OAuth connection, you know, after you've done uh, all of the first four steps, you will realize that uh, the fifth step uh, takes, uh, you know, possibly, uh, you know, twice the amount of time uh, that the first few steps, uh, you know, the first four steps actually took for you to get there. Uh, so when we're talking about uh, the OAuth connection, how do you go about actually setting up an OAuth collection? Now, if I were a user who was using multiple SaaS tools, uh, then I could, you know, I could go into a workflow system like, you know, a Zapier or, uh, you know, or a Workato or, or Blender or something like that and, and create a workflow saying that, you know, when there's a trigger in, in, in a certain system, I want an action in some other system, uh, but then that you know, you know that's not what you want to offer. As a SaaS system, you want to offer ready-made integrations, so you start building uh, the integrations from scratch. Uh, you start setting up a server to receive the uh, the OAuth uh, tokens, uh, the authorization code. You start you you put in code over there. After you've downloaded uh, the libraries for your particular development environment, uh, you download libraries to actually, you know, uh, do the encryption uh, to uh, exchange your authorization codes for access codes. You, ex you know, when the access codes expire, you exchange your fresh uh, tokens. You get fresh codes, and you also set up a, a, a database a data store to actually store all of these tokens because you know when the triggers occur in your system uh, and they actually do want to uh, you know make a, a communication call to one of your providers uh, you know the information has to be there in some kind of a data store uh, and remember that you know the, uh, the information in your data store needs to be completely encrypted at rest and at transport as well uh, now, with what with this, what you have really done uh, with the OAuth connection is you've actually done, uh, uh, you know, if you treated it like a, you know, a dedicated module, you would have done the right thing and uh, created all the components. But if you treated it like an extension, uh, you would have taken shortcuts. You would have downloaded code uh, which is not uh, uh, supported by parties, which is you know put out there, but it was available in your language, so it made sense to use it then. Uh, and that code then slipped into production. And then you finally uh, go live, uh, which again means if you've done it right, you've got a separate set of servers or separate containers managing the OAuth system for you. Now, uh, Samir, can you just go to the next slide? The next. Yeah. 
So, uh, so this, sorry, previous one, sorry, it's the highlight. So this is uh, uh, the problem that uh, PathFix actually takes away, uh, you know, from you know from you. You really do not have to spend time uh, trying to do all of this. All you need to do is uh, go to your providers, get your client ID and your secret, and uh, you know, uh, and you know, and feed it into uh, into PathFix, and subsequently you. You, you, you have to then pass all your messages through PathFix server. Essentially, we take care of everything that you would have done uh, in these two stages. And we also take care of uh, simplicity of implementation. Uh, you know, for your developers, they, there is nothing new that they have to learn. Uh, we, uh, you know, we take care of scalability. We take care of latency issues. Uh, and, uh, and of course, we take care of security as well. Yes, so that's uh, yeah. I, so, so 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 this is the stage. You know, you, it's it's not necessary that uh, you know if you're actually building a new SaaS uh, software, you've got to implement it. You might have a lot of legacy code uh, that uh, you know uh, that actually you are you, you're actually spending time keeping that code up. You're keeping that code alive. Uh, you don't really need to do that. You know, uh, Pathfix presents itself as a drop-in replacement. Uh, and the only code that you, you know, that PathFix gives you is, uh, is the endpoint URLs uh, so that you can pass your messages through PathFix server. And there is no uh, API absolutely, uh, uh, you know, necessary. Uh, you can just take the API documentation that is mentioned uh, with your provider, uh, package it into a JSON and send it through our pass-through servers we'll take care of the rest for you. So, so the stage of development could either be at the beginning or the stage of development uh, you know, could be if you've implemented, but your OAuth strategy or your integration strategy, it's not moving fast enough. This lets you, you know, get there at rocket speed. That's awesome. And a lot of people don't consider these, uh, these problems when they're putting their product together especially if this is their first time launching a SaaS, they're not considering how much manpower, even time and money is involved when it uh, comes to setting up integrations. Yes, yes, people completely miss that out. Uh, uh, and they don't do it intentionally because, you know, uh, uh, a SaaS startup has, uh, you know, tons of things to, uh, to worry about. And, uh, you know, the more you can take off your plate and off outsource to ready-made development environments, or serverless environments, the better it works for a SaaS organization. Uh, yeah, and not only then, I mean, so, you know, so if you had a need for a drive, you wouldn't go and make a drive, you just integrate. So integration, uh, you know, is becoming more and more of a strategic requirement uh, with SaaS softwares uh, in, in today's hyper-specialized uh, SaaS environment. I agree. Uh so I'm actually excited to see what use cases we have available for uh, our viewers. Yeah, so Mary, you, you want to? Sure, so uh, yeah, so if I could just jump here. Uh, so how exactly we, uh, just to you know take this a little forward, how are we you know changing, what exactly does PathFix offer, right? So when you are integrating using um, you know, PathFix, what you would get are two primary features. One is the end user authorization, where uh, you, know, you allow your users to essentially connect and authorize, which is where they would get a button that says integrate with, uh, you know, integrate with Slack or integrate with you know, connect to intercom. So that is the authorization that PathFix will, in, will handle end to end. And once the authorization has been completed, the second uh, feature set that you know PathFix offers is the ability for you to communicate between your app and the service provider. So be it either pushing the data from your uh, application to the service provider or pulling information from the service provider to your app. Right, so PathFix essentially handles both sides of it. And this is all end-to-end -end, uh, secure. Uh, our users don't have to worry about uh, people uh, I guess hijacking data in in transit. Yes, I mean, uh, so so hijacking data in transit, uh, you know, is more or less uh, you know not uh, you know not possible as long as you're using uh, you know uh, 
you know, secure socket layers and you've configured to use, uh, uh, you know, TLS uh, 2.0 version uh, on your servers for security. Uh, but essentially, what's more important is the data at rest, because, you know, uh, uh, you know, with the data, you know, in transit, you know, with that all encrypted, uh, the data at rest needs to be, you know, severely uh, protected because uh, that actually gives, you know, if it's if that is hacked into, it actually gives access to your end users uh, complete account uh, through your client ID, which is actually, you know, a, a very serious problem. So, you know, as part of our, uh, you, uh, you know, basic guide, guiding principles, uh, you know, in PathFix, uh, you know, security is, is like way up there, uh, uh, but, you know, very close uh, after we've got uh, scalability and latency, uh, uh, you know, uh, that we, you know, that we excessively stress upon uh, in our, in our company. Awesome. And that's very important for people to know, uh, because that's a great concern today, especially with all these uh, reports of hackers and I'm sure uh, a SaaS would not want to be a victim of that because it could def definitely hurt the reputation. And if they have less people who have access to uh, all the secret keys, that would definitely help too. Right. Awesome. So uh, I guess what's what's next on yeah, our... So just to go over, you know, the scenario, the use cases that you were talking about. So if we were to take, uh, you know, the first scenario where we're, you know, where PathFix would essentially come in, right? So uh, say, for instance, in this first scenario, we are looking at an enterprise license management company, right? So that what, what they do is they have multiple, you know, uh, they create reports from multiple SaaS usages, right? So they pull license information and the number of users for each of these platforms and the billing across multiple platforms, right? So what they want to do is say they want to allow their users to be able to connect uh, and link all of their existing SaaS accounts into this platform so they have a holistic view of what is happening on their platform, right? So this is one scenario or one use case where uh, PathFix would be, you know, uh, where an OAuth integration as such is, is required. And this is where essentially PathFix would come in, right? So, um, the other scenario that you know could possibly be is say it is a you know a visual say a road mapping solution right where uh, the platform essentially offers you a road map and you know news feed uh, capabilities right what they would like to do is they would like to allow their users to pull in information from uh, a trello board or jira and bring it into the into this road mapping solution Right. So uh, these, the, you know, if we were to look at these two scenarios where the first scenario is so heavily dependent on integration and the second scenario is just looking at an extension of, you know, of their core offering where they are, uh, you know, just pulling in information from their ex from their users existing platforms that they have access to. So making it a lot easier, you know, essentially what they are trying to do is you know, uh, be a part of the user stack, not get the users to redo things that they have already done in some of their existing solutions, right? So they are two different kind of companies, but their need at the end of it is the same, where they want OAuth connectivity to be able to provide integration to speak to their existing solutions that they that their end users are a part of, right? So this is essentially where we're saying that, you know, PathFix would fit in where, uh, you know, they can, uh, these sort of companies could just come, uh, you know, use, uh, sign up with PathFix, just add their application in there. Setup will get done in uh, essentially less than five minutes. Uh, you know, they would not have to download and manage any sort of SDKs, you know, like Ralph had mentioned at the beginning. Uh, and obviously you would have no servers to manage uh, the data encryption security would be handled entirely by PathFix. So the company can essentially focus on their core solution. And, uh, you know, without actually having to worry about managing additional servers or spending, you know, uh, at least, you know, 400 plus hours per integration, uh, um, you know, with their engineering team. Awesome. So we mentioned this other day about how you no longer need to have a specialized person 
who needs to know everything about uh, integrating a, a Google setup, for example. Uh, now all you have to do is simply use Pathfix to manage that connection in under five minutes. You don't have to worry about coding. And we even had a calculator that uh, was available. Uh, maybe we could drop that in the comment section. So that way people can actually estimate how much time and money they would normally spend setting up anywhere from five to 10 to 20 integrations. Yeah. Right, absolutely. So we do have a calculator that is there on the website that users can access if they would like to get a sense of what is the current, uh, you know, current, you know, process that they are possibly following or they are thinking of following of managing their own servers or building out their own OAuth connectivity, uh, because for, you know, you would be able to understand that it would take you anywhere from 400 plus hours, which would, you know, essentially raise to about $30,000, dollars just to build out, you know, say five, you know, integrations to your platform. So you could uh, essentially just take a look at the uh, breakdown that is there on the website. And yes, we will we'll share that link at the end of this webinar as well. Awesome. That was actually very helpful for me because Usually people don't think about things until they start visualizing it and having that calculated, uh, it made it really easy. Okay, great. So uh, yeah, we will definitely put that out there. And uh, in case if anyone would even like to understand, you know, what the breakup is and, you know, so we also have a complete uh, breakdown of each element that goes in when you're trying to build out that connectivity. Excellent. Uh, so let's jump to the next slide. Uh, well, actually, you know, that is, uh, I think that is all that we have to share uh, in respect to what Pathfix could, uh, you know, possibly do when it comes to looking at your different stages of integration where, uh, you know, the different sort of scenarios where in one, in one side you might have, um, you know, essentially users who would, uh, companies that would like to completely focus on, um, you know, a very integration heavy strategy versus companies that would just like to extend their existing use cases or bring in data from the user's existing stack. Gotcha. So it's very interesting because we can start to identify various problems that uh, SaaS founders would face ranging from uh, development hours to having to deal with a, like a rinse and repeat style system where they have to keep uh, dealing with the same integration over and over again, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. In fact, uh, you know, uh, integration strategies, you know, what I've seen in, 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 the, in the companies that have uh, been a part of, or the products that have been a part of, uh, uh, the implementation of, uh, of an integration, you, because it used to be so complex, it actually used to restrict uh, the company's ability to roll out integrations. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, integrations, in fact, you know, uh, it's so important, uh, you know, for a, a development company, like in, in the example uh, 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 that was mentioned earlier with a road mapping company, uh, you know, uh, with an integration strategy of pulling information from a Trello board or a Jira, uh, you can immediately tap into, uh, you know, the users of your target software that are already out there uh, just by having an integration into those softwares. So it basically gives you a big lead uh, in your launch strategy, in, in, in your go-to-market strategy so that you know, you're not really stuck with saying that, okay, I've got to build everything from ground up. You know, I will build a system and I will go out there and I will uh, spend loads of money uh, trying to get people in. At some point you realize that having an integration strategy somewhere over there uh, helps your go-to-market, uh, uh, you, you know, your, your, your go-to-market strategy, uh, you know, very heavily. I agree. Uh, there are times when I visit websites and they always ask, oh, sign up for an account or create this user account. And then if I go through the options, I don't see Facebook integration or Google integration. I'm less likely to want to sign up. Because uh, I like that single sign-on capability. Passwords. I mean, and how many passwords are you going to remember? So you know, I can see what you're saying. That you know, the sign sign up itself is is like your starting point. Uh, you know, you could actually go with the, you know some more serious uh, uh, SSO or single sign-on providers, but that is actually you know because you mentioned it, 
it is actually a very good example of a basic integration strategy saying that okay you know i don't really want to manage authentication uh, as part of my integration strategy i will push the authentication to you know to google to github to facebook to linkedin whatever my end users uh, you know common usage scenarios are so so like what we've done uh, you know we have a strategy over there and you know we pushing it uh, to uh, uh, you know to to google and as well as uh, github because we believe most of uh, our our developer audience are going to have accounts over there and the familiarity that they don't really have to share passwords with us uh, actually helps because you know one click and you're in you you know you say you, you tell google okay allow them to read your public profile and you're in and just that integration strategy has actually checked a hidden checkbox uh, in the in the developer's mind exactly and these are the things that developers should really think about uh, how do they manage their stack and since we're actually talking about the stack what what do you feel like uh, pathfix will help our developers do and expand on as they're uh, i guess formulating what their stack should be because typically when people put together their strategy for putting together their stack they're probably thinking about money how much time is available well, what resources are available and now using pathfix this can open many doors true or not true yeah it actually leads to more quality work uh, you know than actually spending a lot of time trying to figure out oh how do i need to do this so so the de developer can actually professionally lead a more quality life is you know is is how i'd like to put it because you know it it is very repetitive you can imagine everybody you know you know every developer in every company is trying to figure out the same or documentation uh and because the or the uh, you know scenario is so complex even if you go to a provider's website you know after a while it will be a little overwhelming you'll see that everybody is putting in a hell lot of an effort trying to explain how to connect to their servers how to you know provide the uh, access tokens uh, if there's an encryption what kind of encryption and you know after you 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 basically you know completely uh, saturated at the end of uh, you know two or three integrations so with this you know you could actually plan to roll out your integrations much much faster and you you can also have a happy developer because you know he's not really so so concerned uh, that he has to go back to this boring or documentation and although it's supposed to be the same architecture every time he goes to uh, uh you know uh, an over document he finds that oh there is something different and i have to go back and change my code code base to accommodate for this as well so so yes time time is a very big uh, aspect which will like, allow you to then focus on quicker releases quicker uh, you know production strategies i agree 100% uh that's the conversation that i hear often amongst my uh, developer friends they always talk about how they spend countless hours at week uh 30 40 50 60 80 hours just working on one problem and i can't wait for this to launch tomorrow and i can just say hey you know you remember that problem you guys were having last week well you don't have to worry about worrying uh setting up those integrations anymore you can just use pathfix and this can solve all your problems uh so that way you can focus on your core product Absolutely you know so this is something that we ourselves faced when we were building you know out our products because we realized that it took far too long just for you know OAuth integrations to happen because you know OAuth all the words you know is a standardized process that you know supposed to uh, simplify everything it just gets a bit too complicated because every service provider has um, you know a, a, their own ways of you know implementing these things uh, they have their own encryption layers they require their own uh, you know methods of uh, connecting with their platforms so the entire approach to searching for the right you know framework for it the, the right token management building that out and uh, you know looking for an sdk that would actually solve the, that problem that they are specifically looking for is too time consuming it takes away too much of time from you know uh, from the engineer's point of view because 
that is time that he could use in focusing on building out the core product, you know, the core functionality and work on, you know, what, uh, what they would want to work on, which is the platform that, you know, that they are a part of versus, you know, spending hours and hours on end trying to build out servers, trying to maintain those servers, build, you know, error logging, uh, error check, uh, building out the encryption from you know end to end, making sure everything is running the way it should, setting up notification engines. So all of that is peripheral, right? And it can it you know it no longer has to take you hours on end for you to build that out. Now with Pathfix, we allow that to happen in you know in less than three minutes. All you have to do is just you know copy and you know just let us know what the client ID and secret is, and we would give you the redirect and all and you are up and running in you know in just a few minutes. So we have a question coming in uh, from our viewers and they want to know, how do you handle uh, integrations that are not currently available on Pathfix? Uh, do you provide any type of high level authentication or data gathering via web scraping? Oh, so mul it's multiple questions. So let's do the first question first. Yeah. How do you handle integrations that are not available on Pathfix, but would so, like uh, you to add it? No, so this is a very, very interesting, uh, interesting question. and. You know, it actually has taken up a lot of time uh, initially when we were actually, uh, you know, trying to set up and, you know, we kept thinking is, you know, what integration? So we wanted all of the integrations from all of the providers to work, which really meant, uh, you know, a, a whole lot of heavy lifting. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, we didn't want to, you know, prioritize saying that, okay, if, uh, you know, uh, I didn't want to give the most popular integrations from one provider, and uh, you know leave out uh, you know the rest until there is a, a request for it so this is here's what we did we, you know we actually designed uh, oauth as an open ended uh, pass through server uh, and uh, if you actually go and look uh, at our playground what you will see is that you don't really have to wait for an integration to be to be available uh, all all you need to wait for is the provider to be available and once the provider is available, uh, uh, your integration uh, payload is picked up as defined in the the, the provider's website and passed through uh, 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 Pathfix servers. So what you realize is that if Slack is offering you 87 in integrations, you can use 87 integrations from day one, irrespective of whether it's, it's not an integration that we're providing. We're providing you a server and the ability to pass this information through our servers. Uh, and our servers will take care of all the, you know, uh, the hygiene uh, issues related to uh, authorization of your message. Right, and just to add to that, we currently have about uh, close to 50 service providers that are already as, you know, uh, live and available for everyone to use. And, uh, you know, we're trying, we're targeting, you know, about to get about 300 uh, different service providers. And, you know, obviously we are, uh, we're keeping a track on our roadmap and any requests that come from our customers and we are prioritizing. We're hoping to get that out in the next few weeks and to hit that 300 service provider list. Awesome. And also, do you provide any high, any type of high level authentication data gathering via web scraping? Oh, uh, no, we don't. And then if not, can you add a SDK for screen scraping so we can create our own integrations? So it seems like, uh, uh, you know, so uh, an SDK for screen scraping, uh, you know, so I, I know a provider uh, uh, by the name of PySync, uh, which actually uh, pulls information and aggregates it and syncs information for certain, uh, you know, industries of data, uh, but it's not necessarily screen scraping. Uh, uh, it falls under the uh, you know uh, data syncing uh, kind of a category. We don't really uh, plan to because you know that will change uh, you know change focus uh, you know in what we're trying to achieve. Uh, uh, possibly you know if if there's heavy request uh, for 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 that kind of stuff, it could be a, a potential uh, product uh, you know that aspiring uh, SaaS entrepreneurs can take up. Uh, but I don't think, uh, you know, it's within the scope of uh, Pathfix vision to actually take care of that right now. Okay, great questions, guys. Keep them coming if you guys have them. Uh, and while we're waiting for questions, let's dive into the features that's available to uh, our viewers tomorrow. 
uh, without revealing the, the plan price. All right. So, uh, so features available is, is obviously, uh, you know, simplicity is, you know, uh, I like to call it simplicity is because uh, all you need to do to actually achieve or take advantage of the complete package that we uh, told you is just get your client ID and secrets uh, from your provider, put it into Pathfix, and it's just uh, three lines of code uh, that you need to, uh, you know, add into your uh, in, into your server side language or your your your, your client side uh, libraries, and uh, you're ready to go. So simplicity is is actually you know very key uh, from a feature perspective. Uh, secondly firewall so we keep mentioning about security so uh, there is a, a firewall uh, which checks for the origins uh, of where the request is coming from in case uh, you know you choose to uh, use uh, javascript uh, there is also uh, uh, ip uh, you know so allowed ips uh, that uh, so if you're doing a server to server uh, integration uh, it will check and allow requests only from certain IPs. And, uh, you know, for uh, servers to server in integrations, there's an additional private key uh, that you can uh, make use of, uh, which overrides, uh, you know, the firewall and origins uh, uh, configuration. Uh, so with this, you've got your, you know, your very own uh, private key uh, that, uh, you know, that you exchange uh, to the server. Uh, so that the server authorizes or honors the call uh, coming from your device. Besides that, uh, we've got uh, a logging, not only error logging, but we also have, uh, you know, a logging of all the requests that go up and down, uh, which appear in a log mode, uh, uh, you know, for a day. Uh, in case uh, in the development mode, you need to debug what is going on. Uh, these are all self-clearing logs uh, because, you know, uh, that is, you know, the actual information going up and down. So the logs just clear up at the end of a day. So if you're actually trying something and trying to figure out, okay, you know, it's, why is something not working? Uh, you know, and, and we realize this, you know, because we are developers ourselves, we need to see the logs as to what's gone wrong. So uh, logs are a big feature. Error, uh, Error notifications, uh, we send error notifications directly on Slack. So, you know, for some reason, if some uh, API server is down or, you know, the request that you've made is failing or, 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 or there, there is a need for reauthorization uh, from your uh, end, uh, end customer, uh, these kind of scenarios generate errors uh, in the calls. And what we do is we trap these and send you uh, messages uh, into Slack. So obviously, you know, we're using our own, uh, you know, dog food to actually send your, uh, send error messages into your Slack uh, for, for those kind of purposes. Uh, besides that, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I, th I think that's all, you know, that's all that there is. Uh, you can actually see uh, the list of users who have actually uh, uh, chosen uh, to authenticate uh, with different providers. So, uh, you know, it's a very simple list uh, right now, uh, but that module is uh, uh, maturing and you'd be able to do some, you know, fairly advanced searches or analytics on that, uh, you know, over time. Yeah. Right. And just to touch on the, um, you know, the, the, you know, just two other additional aspects, and that is, you know, uh, we are uh, completely scalable, which means that, you know, we'd be able to um, expand and depending on what your needs are, uh, we would be able to handle high volumes, uh, you know, without any issues. So you'd be able to go up. Uh, you know, with the number of users and you'd be able to go down as well. So the whole scalable issue would not, is, is something that we have uh, completely handled. Uh, apart from that, we also guarantee an, you know, annual uptime uh, percentage of about 99.5%. Uh, uh, and uh, you would, uh, we also provide a very low latency for authorization and message sending, right? Uh, so essentially what we're saying is that you'd be able to connect to as many providers without uh, having to worry about infrastructure or be, you know, uh, worry about the actual uh, message sending and communication between the applications. Excellent. Uh, we have another question coming in. Uh, will, will licensing allow us to use Pathfix on multiple apps that we're developing or will it be based on per app? That's a great question. 
No, so uh, so the licensing works uh, uh, across the account. Every account, uh, you know, can have uh, multiple apps. Uh, so uh, you know, uh, so if you have, uh, uh, you know, if if you've taken up a plan which uh, allows you to send, uh, you know, fifty thousand or five hundred thousand messages, it is across your account and not across it. It's it's not app specific. It's account specific. So if you have uh, ten apps. You can split it between those ten apps. In fact, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, you could, you know, it also caters for uh, messages uh, for tenants and subtenants. You know, that's probably, you know, a more advanced uh, subject. Uh, we probably take it up some other time. Yep, we could definitely go into that tomorrow. We do the the full feature deep dive and walkthrough. That way, we can show visually how that works uh, with various mm -hmm. integrations. So if you guys are curious about how that would work, about tenants and subtenants, make sure you join us tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern time uh, for our call. So that way you guys can actually see the entire process of uh, launching a PathFix integration from start to finish. Uh, if you guys have other questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Uh, but uh, so far, I believe a lot of people are pretty excited about what we're about to do. And I'm excited to see the fruits of this labor because uh, if we can cut down development time, we can definitely offer more to our community, uh, especially during these troubling times uh, with everything that's going on, with so much uncertainty in today's economy and today's uh, work environment. More and more people are now turning to uh, work from home and with a growing demand for work from home, that means there's gonna be more demand for SaaS overall. So we saw that happen with Zoom. We saw that happen with Slack. We saw that happen with a lot of these different uh, channels. So right now, people's creativity is on like maximum and everyone's looking for ways to solve these issues with uh, using, I guess, the internet as a vehicle, as a tool to create success. I'm sure you guys would agree. Absolutely. Oh, definitely do agree, yeah. Yeah, awesome. we completely agree. So that ends our time for today. It's 1 p.m. So thank you guys for joining us. Uh, for those of you guys who just hopped on the call, this is going to be recorded and reposted onto Facebook and YouTube. So don't worry. And if you guys have questions regarding uh, PathFix, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. I mean, uh, in, uh, in our comment section below. So that way we can answer them tomorrow during our live call. And if you guys are curious about how to set up your account, make sure you join us at 12 p.m. Eastern time. So that way we can show you from start to finish how to set up your account, how to add on integrations. And we'll also dive into the different features of every plan that's available, whether you're a small starting uh, SaaS to a full-blown SaaS that has many integrations. We'll show you all the different pricing schemes as well as your uh i guess your features as your lifetime deal so thank you for joining us today thank you guys thanks ralph thanks amir for uh jumping on the call today so that way we can educate our viewers more on what pathfix is what it will do for them and where they can go as a business so thank you again thanks so much richard thanks. this has been great if anybody has any questions, you can, of course, you know, um, put them on the comments so you can also reach our support. We're at, you know, support at pathfix.com. Awesome. And again, uh, we'll be sharing the link for the calculator for those of you guys who are curious on uh, how much time and money would be spent on, uh, on your integration setup. So if you want to streamline your stack, if you want to start saving money, check out that calculator and then join us on the call tomorrow. So see you guys. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Bye.